Hello, welcome to this evening's TI Technology webinar hosted by Texas Instruments, where we will take a look at how to learn how to code with Python using the TI CX2 technology. This is the third of a series of three webinars focused on coding in Python with the CX2 handheld. I see that many of you are joining for uh, with us for the first time, so we'd like to offer a special welcome if this is your first T-Cubed prof professional development webinar. We would also like to thank you for completing the poll at the right side of your screen. My name is Stacy Thibodeau. I will be the moderator for this event. I've been in a science classroom for 20 years. I teach at Southside High School in Youngsville, Louisiana, where I teach all levels of Chemistry 1 and 2 and an Introduction to Robotics course. I use TI technology to assist my teaching data collection and modeling math concepts, linking them to science content as well as the TI Innovator Hub for my robotics program. I'm happy to introduce our panelists tonight, Andy Parr and Tony Norell. Tony has over 25 years of teaching experience from fifth grade to college algebra. She is a retired mathematics specialist in ESC Region 2. Currently, she is a T-Cubed Regional Instructor and owns Norell Mathematics Consulting. She is a recipient of the Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. Tony enjoys working with math teachers to help integrate technology in their classrooms. Thanks for being with us tonight, Tony. Thank you. It's good to be here. And Miss Andy Parr. Andy has been working in mathematics education since 1999. She has taught pre-algebra through AP statistics. She currently lives in Central Texas and serves as a math specialist working with middle and high school mathematics, computer science, and STEM teachers. Thanks for being with us tonight, Andy. Thank you. I'm looking forward to a great evening. We are expecting a large crowd, so your audio is muted. Feel free to send questions to all panelists using the Q&A window or chat on the right side of your screen. We also will send general chat messages in the chat window. This section is being recorded, and as a reminder, we will provide a link to this event's certificate of attendance at the conclusion of the webinar. Once the recording is available, if you'd like to follow along with your handheld or software, and we hope that you will, we recommend doing this with the recording so you can download the activities and pause and rewind the recording as necessary. We don't expect you'll have any audio issues tonight, but in the event that you do, try se selecting communicate in the WebEx menu, audio broadcasts, and then click join. All right, Andy, if you would like to go over the agenda real quick. Sure, um, we're gonna start off with just uh, what we've done is our welcome and introductions, and then uh, we are going to use uh, Python coding skills to program specifically on the TI Innovator Hub. All right, thank you. And then Tony, if you would like to go over the expected outcomes, please. Yes. Um, okay. So. We're going to create a Python program on the Inspire CX2 that plays sounds lights, and then displays brightness level on the Innovator Hub. So those are the three things that um, are built into the Hub. And then we're going to create a Python program um, on the Inspire that plays a song, and we're gonna create it in such a way that it can be edited to play different songs on the Innovator Hub. So I'm looking forward to this one, Andy. I am. And I am as well. Um, like I mentioned, I teach a robotics class my CX2s came in over the summer break, and I can't wait to do some Python with my innovator. All right, Andy, it is all yours if you'd like to share your screen. I would, thank you. 
So we are going to start off with a, a game. And with this game, I'm going to hold my, my uh, hold my hub up to the innovator. You should be seeing my software. And the first thing we want to do is I'm going to, we're going to play two number one. And the question is, is can you name this song? And if you would, if you, once you hear it and you recognize it, go ahead and type that in the chat. This is also a good way for us to do another mic check to make sure our microphones are working. It hasn't played yet. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Hold on. How fun. I see my screen just lighting up with the chat of jingle bells. <laughs> Great. Okay. So there's one. We have three songs. So let's try this one. We all start swaying to the song. <laughs> Great. All right. So we have one more song and then we'll move into us creating songs along these lines. Last one. How much fun. Nice. You know, Andy, I'm wondering, um, does anybody want to tell us in the chat, like, what would be their, would, when they learn how to, how to um, code a song on the hub, what's going to be their first song that they're going to want to, want to code? Oh, I'm absolutely. Curious. Everybody has their first. Happy birthday. That's a good one. Do you remember what your first one was, Andy, that you wanted to code? Oh, I wanted to code like 15 songs all at once. <laughs> so, <laughs> and yes, um, the first one that I coded, uh, it was, it was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And I wanted that and I wanted Happy Birthday. Nice. I wasn't quite ready for a huge long song yet until I got my feet wet and got it figured out. Um, <laughs> And that, that really is what our goal today is just to get your feet wet, get going, and then we just let you run from there. Um, oh, we have Star Wars. Love it. Yeah, that was my, that was my first song that I coded. <laughs> <laughs> it was Star Wars. <laughs> Great. Well, again, Welcome to webinar three. We are all the way in the middle of summer. Webinar one was back in March. It's it's crazy to think that we've uh, been plugging right along and been doing this since March. That being said, we've covered a lot of ground. Back in that first webinar, we just got started. We defined a function. We created an averaging grades program that you could then adapt to accommodate any formula, any algorithm that you are looking for. In webinar two, we looked at the structure of loops. So that for loop um, for those iterations, then we looked at a while loop that continues to loop as long as that Boolean expression is true. We're going to need both of those tonight, right? Andy? We are, we are going to use okay. both. We're going to use everything that we've done in both webinar one and webinar two. We're going to use that today. Um, we also talked about list in webinar two. We just got to dabble in it, but we gave that preview of today come webinar three. We are going to keep using list so that we can use that hub in a, in a way, not the way, a way um, to create songs. So, but those give us that foundation for lots of different programs. 
So again, we're going to start with the handheld um, and with that handheld, I have my hub connected um, with a, a cord to my computer. You can connect it to your computer or you can connect it to your handheld. So it's really up to you if you want to use follow along in the software, as Stacy said earlier, or if you want to come just stick with us tonight and then go back and watch the recording and practice on your own. Like we did earlier when we did that math import in webinar one and two today, we're going to really need to use that TI hub import. And we're going to focus on three specific aspects of the hub. And as Tony said earlier this evening, those are those built in devices. And we are going to look specifically at lights. At sound and the brightness sensor. So we're going to get started off just to look at that structure to begin with, and then we'll use that to build a song. All right, Tony, are we doing okay? Anything that I need to. No, we're ready. Let's go. We're ready. All right. So when you plug your handheld or your handheld, your innovator hub into either a handheld or your computer, you're going to get that little green light. And we'll see if you can see there's that little green light. You have that little green light that shows up and that says, good job, you've got it plugged in. We're ready to rock and roll. Um, it runs, the hub runs off the power of the handheld. So yes, there is a power a port for power. That being said, that's, you typically aren't gonna need to use that. That's um, an external power source. So when, if the power from the handheld is not enough, you can give it that extra boost of power. So we're not gonna need that tonight. Just throwing that in there. I remember Andy, one time we hooked up a motor or something to the hub and it needed extra power. I did, I think I could candy, make it a candy dispenser or we did something that, okay. yeah, that we needed a little bit extra of a boost. Okay. Um, so, but what we're doing right now, playing music, sounds, that brightness sensor, we won't need that external battery. Okay, good. Now, again, we are uh, going to start looking at lights and what lights we have on there. There are two light sensors that we have here. One is that a red LED light and its name is light. So if you turn the light on, you're going to get a red light. That's great. Why I want some color. I want to choose my color. I want lots of options. And so we're going to use the RGB light and that RGB's name is color. So as we go into that sub menu, we'll look and find um, options under color. So let's um, talk about this to begin with. I'm here sharing my screen. Let's create a new document. And with that new document, as we've done before, we're going to add Python and call it new. And so with that, what do we want to call it? Oh, I don't know. I called mine intro because this is just an intro to what we're going to do when we create that song. Now, with this, I have multiple options because I'm using the hub. I very well could come in here as the type and scroll down and here is hub project. I can choose that hub project and that will import any module library that I need. Uh, maybe even some that I don't need. But it's, it will import all those that you could possibly want, potentially want in that program. So if you want to do that hub project and already have those things, those modules imported, so you don't have to think about it. Absolutely go for it. I'm going to choose it as a blank program because. I want to model how another option that you have for that. Great. That's what I was going to ask you, Andy, if you can show us where we can find that hub import if we don't um, choose it there on type. Right. Right, so it depends on where you're thinking at this point. Again, you can use that hub or you can just say as a blank program. And now I know that I'm going to want to use the hub features that hub menu. So to do that, 
I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to go to the TI hub. Again, I love the icons. I like that icon. It looks like a little hub. And then come from TI hub import. And now that allows me to use everything that is in that menu. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at that brightness sensor. Now, what I'm going to do is as we go through, I'm writing comments in my program and those comments just help me. Again, we're doing a, just an introductory program. Maybe you don't need comments. I appreciate the comments. So when I go back and look at it, I go, well, why in the world did I put that command in there to begin with? Or Tony looks at my program and she can go, oh, I'm so glad she wrote that comment because I don't know where she was going with that. So we share a lot of programs and we just comment all over the place on them. So to do comments, I can either um, just use that hashtag or pounds, depending on your age and your comfort level. Um, or I can also come in here to menu and edit, and that allows me to comment or uncomment. Also, you'll notice there's quick keys of control T, um, whichever you would like. And the first thing we want to do is we want to check the brightness sensor. So that brightness sensor gets the light coming in and we're going to be using it to check what is the ambient light? What is the light in your room? I'm not in a super bright room per se. Um, you may be in, in a brighter room. So what is, what is the brightness of your room? So I am saying the hub checking the ambient light. So that tells me what my goal, what I want to do. And you notice again that it's grayed out. Now, um, to get that brightness, I need to assign it to uh, a variable. So I'm going to name my variable how underscore bright because I want that to identify what, what does that variable stand for? What is it going to be? Um, again, you notice that I use that underscore so that I don't have any spaces in my name. Come here to equal, so that is signing. And now I can go into menu, come down to hub. We talked about, we're looking at the three built-in devices. So as I look at the built-in devices, I can look at brightness input. So now I want to take that measurement. Now at that point, that's great. I have now gotten that input, but if I run this, I don't get anything out of it unless I print uh, that measurement. So I'm again going to go to menu. This is not exclusive to the hub. So I'm going to go into built in to the software input output and that print statement. And what is it that I want to print? Well, I want to print spelled correctly. How bright, what is the ambient light in the room? What is that input? Tony, we okay? Am I missing anything? Yes. And so, so your first line of code is taking that brightness measurement and storing it in a variable that you called how bright. And then the second line of code is saying, okay, now that you've stored that measurement in that variable, now print it out for us. Correct. Display it. Correct. Okay. I'm with you. And so as I look at my hub, where I have that USB cord, the mini USB cord plugged in, I can see to the left of that brightness. So that is, and I know you probably aren't necessarily going to be able to see this, but there it says, a little fuzzy, but there it says the long word is brightness. So I'm just going to leave it here on my table and let's run that so we can see what is the ambient light in my room. When you run in your room, again, you could have a completely different value. So control R checks it all. And well, my room's not all that bright, but that's okay. 
We'll be all right. So are, is anyone else running it? I'm going to run it again, kind of put it a little more towards a light. Point okay, so Todd got 0.537, okay. I did it towards a brighter. Oh yeah, so big difference in yours, Andy, when you when you pointed it towards the light. Very much so. What is it measured in? I don't know. I forgot. Okay. I'll look it up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. So from here, we said, okay, how bright is it? Now what I would like to do, absolutely use the flashlight on your phone and look at that difference between just in your room pointed, like I said, mine's kind of pointed towards a dark corner versus when I shine it towards a light or when you shine it to a flashlight. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. So, um, the unit that we're looking at, it's measuring in lumens. It is. Thank yes, you. thank you. So, from here, now we have that brightness sensor and we'll use that later on in our program. But right now, let's make a sound. So let's make some note for some amount of time. So again, I'm going to press control T for comment. And um, I'm going to say hub playing a note for an amount of time. All right. So if we're going to play that note again, going into menu, Coming to the hub, it is a built-in device, and we want sound. Now, you have a couple of options here. You can play a tone, which is in a frequency for an amount of time, or now with Python, we have this note. And Tony and I are so excited about this option of a note. So with note, we now, I and also so appreciate you I giving me prompts, giving me examples. What what is it that you want to play? What octave? What note? How long? And right now, let's play that middle C, C four, and let's play that for again. We have that duration of time. I don't want to listen to this for 100 seconds. Um, we have lots more to do. We don't have time for 100 seconds, but we can do two seconds. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do next is this I find incredibly fascinating with the software or with programming. It's going to go line by line by line by line by line by line by line. It, it's going to keep going and I mean, there's lots of different options in it, but it's going to keep marching through the program. And so what we wanted to do was I wanted to play for that whole 2 seconds before moving on to, for instance, another note. Does that track? So, I'm going to come in here to menu. In. Well, now I've lost it all. So those commands and they are asleep. So let me do that again because I bounced around a little bit. It is the hub that I want to wait. I'm going to ask it to do a command and specifically I want it to wait sleep. So I want the program to wait for the duration of that note. If I played C for two seconds, I want the program to wait to sleep. Hold on until that whole note, that whole amount of that note is played. 
So that sleep is, is so that it doesn't go on to the next note right away and run them together or just, okay, got it. Perfect clarification. Yes. And just so we can tell that distinct clear distinction between one note and the next note, I'm going to put an additional sleep command there for just a fraction of amount of a time just to help that transition from one note to the next. So I'm again going to go to my menu hub commands. I'm going to have that sleep again. Question, could I type it? Absolutely, you could. You absolutely could type it. I am a huge advocate of using that menu, especially as we're working with people, students that are on using their handhelds. Um, typing on the handheld whole programs is a little cumbersome, but if using that menu, that really helps reinforce it and it removes all issues of syntax. So I'm going to wait. So could I sit for two point? Yes, I could. So I was just going to ask that Andy. And so I was thinking that the, so I was going to ask you if the reason that you did those separately is so that we could distinctly see that that one sleep matches the amount of time that the note is playing, because that's how long we want the program to wait. And then the next sleep is more like the rest between the notes. So that distinction distinction. But yes. you could put them together if you, of course if you, you wanted could. to. Sure, so I'm sure. Thinking, I'm thinking that you're thinking about what happens maybe when that time is not a two, but maybe it's a variable or something, and then those two variables match. Or something. Right. I don't, okay, okay. So, yeah, so again, we are leading right into our next section where, remember, we we're talking about those loops, those four loops as we kind of march through different notes to play that song. I want that first leap to be whatever the duration of that note is. And then each time I want just mm, a smidgen of rest before we play that next note. So in this instant right here, absolutely you could combine them. Okay. There's lots of ways you can write this program that we're gonna talk about here in a minute, but for this one, that's why I intentionally separated them. And by I, I mean we. So now we're ready to play the next note. Right? Let's play another note. Okay. Let's play another note. So, and this one, let's, I'm going to go back to menu. Everything we're rocking and rolling with right now is in the hub. Those built in devices. We still want sound because we're playing a note and I could use frequency, but I'm not gonna, I like note. So we're going to play note. Example A4, well, how about A6? Just to show a significant difference. And again, I'm going to play that for two seconds. Could I put another sleep command in there? Be these two sleep commands again after this note? You absolutely could. For what we're doing right now, we're playing two notes and since we're playing two notes i'm not going to put a sleep command after each one or after the second one tony how's it look it looks good so we don't have to put those sleep commands in because there's nothing coming after it in our program so it's going to end with that second one anyway right okay 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 so we're going to try this one more time i'm going to hold my hub up to my um, microphone and let's make sure we can hear those two notes. I definitely heard them both. Mm -hmm. And again, I still got that brightness. There. All right. Last thing we want to do, and then we're ready to move on. I'm going to move up just a little bit. We said we were going to do brightness sensor. We said we were going to do color and we said we were going let me try it, brightness sensor sound and then color. And so now we're ready for that color. Let's, um, let's 
use our color. So we are going to talk about the hub displaying the RGB light. Okay, so we want to choose a light and really what I would like for that light to do is I would um, so I can see the brightness output. Okay, I will. Um, okay, I want it to blink. So with that, and I'm going to smooth squish over just a smidge. So I want um, my light to blink. So I need to choose a color first. And after I choose that color, then I'm going to ask it to blink. So I'm going to go to menu, hub, still in those built-in devices. You'll notice we have a pattern going here. And remember, light is that red one. Color is the RGB. So I'm going to choose that RGB. And I'm, I'm just making up numbers. So I'm doing 62, 25, 200, just um, some numbers there. Again, it's going to display it. And now I want to make it blink. So now I want to make it blink. Again, I'm commenting a whole lot here. So menu, the hub, built-in devices. I'm looking for that color output. And you saw it a minute ago. There's blink, the frequency, and the time. So how often do I want it to blink? What's that frequency? I'm choosing two. And then I want it to blink. Let's just blink for one second. So we have the um, brightness sensor. Then we have it playing two notes. And then we have it blinking with whatever color this RGB is. So I'm going to hold my hub up to the um, camera. I'm going to press Control R. So now you should be able to see me and my software. So there's one note. There's one note. And then it blinked. And so it's kind of a blue color. Did you see that? Blue. There. So we could go through every note of a song and play a you know note by note by note note sleep and i mean we could do something like that a note how long a note how long a note how long and over and over and over again but i would like ideally we can make that a little more efficient. And um, what if we created that program? It's um, checking that light and then um, adding a loop so we can play um, a song. Okay. Now, there are lots of ways um, you could code a song. There are lots of ways. And we are going to choose one of them. And this is great. We have, there's a, we have amazing friends at TI, and they created this program. And Tony and I liked it so much because of its versatility. We said, mm -hmm. please, may we share this? And they said, well, yes, absolutely. Um, and we're going to talk about the different components that we can. So again, we can do lots of different things. We have lots of different options, but this is um, an option with, so you can adapt it to anything you want. 
Yeah, I think this will be a great program, Andy. If somebody wants to pick up some sheet music and and they want to program their song, and they'll be able to adapt it very well in terms of of tempo and um, um, the notes and the and the uh, timing and so forth. Very much so. So there's a couple of things that we need to talk about. I'm going to press my home button because I am going to create a new program. So I'm going to choose new. Do I want to save it? I think it's fabulous, but no, no, I'm not going to save it. And I'm going to add Python. And I'm going to call it, um, I'm just going to call it music. And that way you can change it. Um, to anything that you want it to be. So again, I'm going to keep mine as a blank program so I can just import um, the hub as I want. So again, to start off, I am going to import that library, the hub library, so I don't forget. And we can go through this. Now, our song we're going to play is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And we're not going to do the whole thing because, again, we don't have that much time left, but we're going to at least get us going. And then you can just adapt and add um, as much as you want to. So the first thing we need to talk about is the tempo, those beats per minute. Again, lots of options. This is, this is an option. So we're going to talk about that duration. Helps if I press the right buttons. Of one beat. Um, and we're going to do 100 um, beats per minute. That's 110. So if we're doing 100 beats per minute, so if we think about that, one beat, so I'm going to name my variable beat, is going to be um, 60 seconds, 60 seconds in a minute, beats per minute, divided by those, that 100, that 100 BPM. So if you wanted to make it a faster song, you can change that program at that point. Okay. Another thing we need to talk about is the time. Is it 4-4 four, four time? Is it 3-4 time? Is it all of those? I played the French horn for many, many years, but that was many, many, many years ago. <laughs> that was not any time recent. Um, but that being said, that is a consideration depending on what song you want to play. Having that versatility, if we build that in now, then you can go in lots of different directions depending on what song you want to play. So I'm again going to do that comment. So just a whole note is four beats in four four time. Okay. Okay. So let's identify what is that whole note. So I'm just going to call it whole. You can call it whole underscore note. You can call it anything you want to call it. I recommend you calling it something that you can remember and you can identify. And so it is going to be, if we're talking 4 4 time, that beat is one beat. We've shown that it's one beat, then it is that beat times four. Okay. We've set the framework, we've set the groundwork. Now we can start talking about color, not color. Try it again. Notes. <laughs> I have lots of things running through my head right now. So we can start talking about notes. So with that, let's um, talk about the first two bars of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That's eight beats and I have, hold on. If we're looking at the song, 
We have half notes, quarter notes, and half notes. So here's our first eight beats. And we know we can identify our notes from there. So just want to have that. There's, I mean, there's music out there all over the place that you can get um, and find out what you want. And if we want to know where it sits on the piano, we also have an image of the piano as well. So let's look at that. And again, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. I am going to add the comments. Uh, this is two bars of twinkle is eight beats in four, four time. There's a high likelihood you may not need all that information. You may not want to do those comments. Again, I like to do them. Um, just so I can reference later what the different parts are. So since I'm calling this twinkle, twinkle, little star, then let's identify the notes. I'm going to identify them by the variable twinkle. So this gives me my, this is where my notes come from. Now, so twinkle, Andy, twinkle is going to be the name of your list. Yes. Okay. Okay. And there's two things that I need for my list. I need the note. A note. Mm -hmm. And what type of note? How long do I play that note? Okay. Okay. And so I, those are the two things I need. And so I am going to create this list. And with this list, let me just move that up the page a little bit so I can see it. So you can see a little easier. I'm going to use a bracket for that list. And so for every note, I'm going to have an essence, an ordered pair, a set of parentheses. So my first one is going to be my note. And my second one is how long do I play that note? So this is a quarter note. The first note in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is a quarter note. So I'm going to play it for a quarter of the measure. And it was middle C, so it's C in the fourth octave. It was. Okay. Thank okay. you. Got it. So, I am going to play the second note. Again, we have eight beats. The second beat is also middle C. And it's a quarter note. You're right. We can also call it the alphabet song. The ABC song. Or like my children i taught them their alphabet backwards rather than forwards side note not relevant all right so uh next we're gonna <laughs> i did poor kids so we then want to go to g and the fourth octave that's what our um when we looked at the sheet music that's where the next one was the next note third note and it is also a quarter note Okay. And then from there, we have one more quarter note. So C, C, G, G. A quarter note. How you doing? Is it working on um, for you? We now need to get um, next one was, I think it was a, I think it was a, mm -hmm. I think it was a. So the question is, is could I copy and paste? Yes. Yes, you could. You absolutely could. So for instance, here, I have another a, that's a quarter note. If I look at that music, 
I can highlight using this shift key right here. I can choose control C, go to the end, control V. Oh, and there's my second A. And the last note is a half note. And that half note is G. And because it's no longer, of course you can. You absolutely could use um, 0.25, 2500s rather than a quarter, either way. All right, um, because it is that list, I need to close, oh, wrong button. I need to close out that list. Tony, have I missed anything? Do we have any questions that I'm missing? Do you have any questions? No, you're doing great. That I'm missing? It absolutely should. Thank you, David. I said it was a half note, and I was in such a habit of hitting quarter notes that I missed it. Thank you. Okay, great. What do we have so far? We have our beats per minute, so we now know those beats. We can identify what that whole note is. Um, we've made created a list for the first two measures, the first eight beats of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We've identified what the note is and the duration of that note, um, how much of that measure that note is played. And now we are ready to create that loop. We're ready to create that for loop. And so that for loop again per, uh, alleviates the need for us to go one note at a time. Now we're going to travel through that list. To do that, we are going to go to menu. We are going to go to built-ins and control, and I want a for loop. And this time we're, go we're going to use that for loop through uh, uh a list, right? So it is because we have that list. Okay. We have that list. Index, it's common to use I. You don't have to. I'm talking about notes. And so I'm going to call mine note. Why? Because it makes me happy. I want to. And it's a program that I'm writing. So what list are we talking about? The list that we are talking about is the one that we just created called Twinkle. And again, love using the menu because it now gives us that structure. It deals with the syntax. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And so now we want to play the notes. So I'm definitely watching my time. We're going to play those notes. Again, these are the same things that we just did in that first program. This is that built-in device. We're going to have that sound output. We're going to play those notes. Now, here's the key. What notes do we want to play? Well, I want to play every note that is in that list. Only the first part of the parentheses, right? We just, we want to do just the first part. Right, for that note, the note, I want it to be the first part. Okay. And so I am going to actually get rid of those parentheses and I'm going to say of the note, I want the first one. This is the beginning of Position one, position zero. Okay. And the time, how long? Well, I want it to be whatever that amount of the measure it is. So of what is the whole? So I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna use that whole and I'm gonna multiply it with my index note with the first position. Yes, we start counting. It, 
we count at zero, we start counting at zero. So this says this node in this position zero for the amount of time in position one. And then we march through it. And now, as we were asked earlier, as we talked about earlier, remember when we paid that uh, middle C earlier, we wanted it to sleep for the duration of the note. Now I want to add that sleep command in here. So pub commands sleep. How long do I want to sleep? Well, I want to sleep for the duration of that note. And we just said the duration of that note is whole times the first position of note. If we don't sleep that entire time, we won't hear the whole note. You're absolutely right. Okay. Last thing we want to do is we want to put a rest in between notes. And so again, we are going to come to hub, come to commands, and come to sleep. And this is the amount that you sleep. Um, I put it just sure. as a rest, just enough just to rest between the notes. Okay. Okay, Andy, before we play this, can you recap this whole for loop for us real quick? Um, I, know, I know you're running short on time, but just so that we understand exactly what the node is doing, and I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Um, so you started out with this for loop that's going to go through the list uh, twinkle. Yep. And so we got our sound note from our hub menu and we want it to start with um, the first position in our ordered pair of our list. Correct. And that first position, um, like someone was telling us, uh, I think David was telling us, is zero. It starts with indexing with zero. Yes. So, so it's going to start, so note at index zero is going to start with C4. Mm -hmm. And then we want it to also play that quarter note. And so that quarter note is going to multiply times whole up there. Correct? So, yes. So we want to march through this list. Okay. We want to play position zero of each ordered pair. So we'll play C4 for one quarter of that whole measure. Okay. Then, and it's going to play for, it's going to, with the pro, we're going to pause the program for a second till it plays that one quarter of that whole measure. Take a breath. It's going to loop back in. It's going to move down the list. Position zero, C4, for a quarter of that measure. It's going to make sure it plays the whole thing. Then it's going to rest. Okay, and Andy, uh, so would you explain, um, this is a good question, mm -hmm. uh, the zero and the one. So we're talking about like inside that parentheses, the first thing in the parentheses would be position zero. The second thing would be position one. Correct. Like there were more things in the parentheses. So that's why the, the first one is zero and the second one is one, so that it knows the first element of inside the parentheses and then the second element inside the parentheses. Yes. Okay. 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 And this is lowercase because this is a command. The sound dot note is a command that the capital note is the indexing. Yes. Of the, of the tuple. Yeah. Yes. Of the two. Yes. Yeah. So, and Again, this indexing, I could have used I, I could I, I could have used anything. It just is coincidental that they're the same. Okay, so if we've done this correctly, it's going to go uh, loop through all the way to the end of our list. Yes. Okay. Crossing our fingers. Okay, we ready? Let's try it. 
So control R. Yay! It worked. So it's so exciting when it works the way that you wanted it to. Awesome. So what can we do from here? We can do so many things. We can add lights. We can add, um, it, we can blink. We can also have it is, if it's twinkle, twinkle, little star, well, it plays uh, the twinkle of the stars come out at night. And so we could make it so only start when it's dark. And so that whole brightness sensor of only playing when it's dark or when it's, you know, the brightness sensor is at a certain level. So there's really lots of things and lots of directions you can go with this. I'm going to add one thing to it. And then I think um, I'm going to challenge you to a the Jeopardy theme. Absolutely. I would love it. I want to add one, just some blinking lights. And then um, I'm going to challenge you to where, what could we do with that brightness sensor for that brightness sensor in there? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this for loop and I want it to blink for me. Okay. I want it to blink, but if we're talking stars, then I want the bright white stars. We created a color earlier that it was just, I picked some numbers and threw them in there and we ended up with a type of blue. So now we need to think of what makes a white light using red, green, and blue. How can I get a white? So I'm gonna have you think about that for a minute. You can toss it in the chat and I'm gonna put that code up here. So I'm gonna come to menu. I'm gonna, we're still with the hub. It is absolutely a built-in device. And I want that color output. We are gonna use that RGB. So Nancy, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yes, if we turn the red, the green, and the blue on as bright as they will, then that is an option to get that white. And so I'm going to go 255 for all of them. So now that says that's the color I want. Now I need to say I want it to blink. And so I'm going to go back to menu, back to hub, those built-in devices, that color, and I want it to blink. And again, I'm going to use that same blink command that I did earlier with two and one. So let's let it run. I'm going to hold it up here. So hopefully we can see it. Very nice. Could you hear it? Okay. I couldn't hear all of it, but I could hear most of it and I saw the blinking. Perfect. <clears throat> so you can change, you can change the frequency. You can change the blinking. You can change um, colors. I'm going to encourage you. We are just about out of time. And, um, what other song would you want to create? And, and then, Andy, yeah, can go we ahead. get, um, can we see if Stacy will, um, share like the full program so that um, so they have a copy of that when they finish the webinar. Yes. And um, absolutely. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen possibly. And then, yes, this is um, you will need the hub to make that to make the sound. Yes. Um, ladies, this was amazing. I'm taking notes and trying to type in chat and I think we could have done just tonight for two, um, two hours. So loved a lot of questions that happened in the chat. I did post, um, the link for the documents tonight. Um, what Andy and Tony did, they compiled all of the webinar documents into one drive folder. So you have access tonight. That's, um, all of the TNS files from the three webinars. 
There's also a link to the certificate of attendance. Um, if for some reason you missed any of that, you will receive an email in the next couple of days with a link to the recording, a link to the documents, a link to your certificate of attendance. That way you can come back full circle. Um, there's a lot of questions about how do you get a hub? First of all, um, if you're interested in, you can actually check out the TI Hub, Innovator Hub from Texas Instruments. So um, if you go to the website, the uh, TISTEMprojects.com, there's um, one project out there right now called Mood Ring, which uses an external temperature sensor and the RGB display to display different colors based on your temperature um, that's recorded. Soon to be, there will be similar to what Andy and Tony presented tonight um, with coding and sounds and music. Um, but that website, you can actually check it out and get the information. Um, if you're interested in purchasing the um, a, your own hub, if you go to the main uh, education.ti.com website and click on uh, where to buy, I put the link in the chat um, where to purchase. It lists all the vendors. Most vendors who um, give the supply the handhelds and the calculators have a lot of the TI Innovator Hub projects, as well as the accessories. You can click on that. Um, I would definitely check out the um, information about the educational technology consultants, your ETCs. They can actually help get some more information to you if that's interested, if you're interested in that. Um, I would definitely check it out. And then, like I mentioned, if you um, have more questions, um, you will get a link um, when you follow up. Uh, at the end of the webinar and then in the next couple of days. Um, you can always check out um, all the different social media outlets. I know that myself, I'm always all over social media with my projects. There's lots of other people who are doing it. Um, all of the social media outlets are at TI Calculators. Um, you'll also get a link to a survey at the end of the webinar tonight. That way you can uh, possibly give suggestions on some upcoming webinars that you're interested in. If you want more Rover, you want Pub, you want Python, I'm sure Andy and Tony can come up with some more um, information for us. And also there are gonna be future webinars. Um, so check out education.ti.com. This uh, three-part series for Python was special. Once school starts, Tuesday night webinars pretty much all throughout the school year. Um, and then TI listens. If you have questions, uh, follow up with that survey. Uh, check them out on education.ti.com. Phew. All right. Thank you, Andy, Tony. Thank you, participants. This was a great night. Um, hopefully, everybody enjoys the rest of their summer. And then, like mentioned, you'll get a link for the recording and you can check us out. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Good night.